Hello. Um, can you all hear me? Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. So um, my name is Haifa Sambo. I am a PhD student at UC Berkeley, and today I'm going to be talking about our work on active tuning control for practical implementations of hybrid and resonant switch capacitor converters. So uh, first we'll go over the background and motivation behind this work, then we will present several active soft switching and soft charging techniques to achieve high performance um, in resonant switch capacitor converters. So there has been a major shift to 48 volt distribution in data centers. This is often achieved using a two-stage approach using a 48 to 12 volt intermediate bus converter in the first stage, followed by a 12 volt to point of load voltage regulator um, in the second stage. So this method allows to uh, significantly reduce distribution losses without disrupting the existing power architecture. Still using a two-stage approach, um, what we are starting to see is um, emerging demand for lower than 12 volt intermediate bus voltages. So using a 48 to eight, 48 to six, or 48 to four volt converter um, in the first stage instead of the more common 48 to 12 volt converter, the overall um, efficiency of the power delivery system can be increased and vertical power delivery can be enabled. So for both 12 volt and lower than 12 volt um, intermediate bus voltages, hybrid switch capacitor converters are topologies of choice due to their ability to achieve both higher um, power density and efficiencies than pure switch capacitor based topologies or magnetic based topologies. So um, in fact, many of my colleagues have designed various fixed ratio um, hybrid switch capacitor converters for data center applications which have demonstrated competitive performance for a wide range of step-down ratios, as you can see on this figure. So first, we will focus on the 4 to 1 cascaded resonant, which is um, the solution that we propose here for 48 volt to 12 volts power conversion. With 6 kilowatts per cubic inch of power density and 99 peak efficiency, this topology has shown state-of-the-art performance for unregulated 48 volt to 12 volt step-down. And this is the schematic for uh, the four to one cascaded resonant. It comprises these fundamental two to one resonant switch capacitor building blocks. So part of what enables the superior performance of the cascaded resonant converter is its ability to, or the ability of this two to one building block to achieve complete soft switching. In fact, to meet the um, increasing power density constraints in data centers, switching frequencies are on the rise, and topologies that can mitigate these losses are desired. However, the timing, um, the gate timing to achieve complete soft switching can be challenging to estimate with precision in these topologies um, because of several non-ideal factors such as the parasitic inductance, um, finite filtering terminal capacitances, tolerances and variations ac across um, primary passive components. And finally, uh, load transients are all challenges to soft switching, and they kind of motivate the need for active soft switching techniques. So the first soft switching technique that we will discuss is zero current switching, or ZCS for short. With ideal ZCS, the drain current of the switches can be ramped down to zero amps before transitions, therefore allowing for um, voltage current or VI overlap losses to be eliminated. And by characterizing the two to one resonant switch capacitor topology, we have found that in the case of incomplete ZCS, there will be um, spikes during the dead time on the switch mode voltage, which will cause it to deviate from its nominal value of Vn over two. So we can use a sensing circuitry, which would be comprised of a single voltage comparator, comparator to interface that with our um, converter and detect non-ideal ZCS conditions and restore precise soft switching. The other soft switching technique that we will discuss is zero voltage switching, or ZVS for short. With ideal ZVS, um, we can also avoid um, voltage current or VI overlap losses by ramping down the drain to source voltage to zero amps, zero volts before switching. But ZVS has another advantage, which um, is that it allows to eliminate the um, losses associated with the parasitic capacitance called COSS. And again here, we can characterize uh, the two to one converter that um, this two to one converter, and we have found that in the case of incomplete ZVS, voltage discontinuities will be observed on the switch mode voltage at switching transitions. And the same sen sensing circuitry that can be used to achieve active ZCS can be used here to detect non-ideal ZVS conditions and restore precise soft switching. So uh, the proposed soft switching techniques are actually, were verified experimentally using the shown hardware prototype. 
and uh, their effectiveness is here shown via this convergence test, and we're using ZC as an, ex as an example, but we could have been using ZVS as well. As shown by the inductor current in yellow, in the initial condition, um, we are very far from the ideal ZCS operating point, and we have noticeable spikes on our uh, switch node voltage, which is in blue. Then after enabling the controller, the system begins to converge towards ZCS, and finally in the converged states, we have precise uh, zero current switching with a nice uh, half wave rectified sine wave and um, a switch node voltage that has no spikes. So as a result of the effectiveness of the active saw switching techniques to eliminate switching losses through transients and component variations, both active ZCS and ZVS have been shown on the, sh on the prototype to achieve higher peak efficiencies than their open loop counterparts, with active ZVS allowing for up to 40% reduction in power losses compared with conventional open loop ZCS. So um, we have demonstrated active control techniques that can maximize the efficiency of the cascading resonant type topology. But when we look at higher conversion ratios, we have more complex interconnections of multiple flying capacitors requiring more careful consideration of capacitor charge sharing loss in addition to switching loss. For example, when transitioning from a series connected um, capacitors to parallel connected capacitors during phase transitions, any voltage ripple mismatch can cause hard charging losses. And soft charging techniques ensure that careful matching of ripple conditions can be met so that we can eliminate these losses um, and achieve reduced EMI due to smoother currents. However, for certain topologies, soft charging can also be um, challenging to achieve as they may be affected by load currents, um, transients, component to tolerance and variations, as well as to topological constraints, which all mo motivate the need for active soft charging techniques for higher conversion ratio converters. So, for example, the, the resonant Dixon converter is one such topology that cannot achieve soft charging with just conventional two-phase operation. It requires a more complex uh, control technique that is called split-phase operation, where extra subphases are added to the conventional two-phase operation. So, as an example, we can see here um, that the phase one can be split into two subphases, phase 1A and phase 1B, which will allow for each flying capacitor to be connected and disconnected at precise moments during the phase that will avoid hard charging. However, calculating these ideal um, subphase durations is non-trivial, as shown in the capacitor um, voltage waveforms on the right. If the A subphase is too short, then we can have um, a sharp stepward dunk Sharp, uh, sharp downward discontinuity on our uh, flying capacitor, which represents hard charging. If the A subphase is too long, the flying capacitor sees a, a sharp upward discontinuity. But if the timing is just right, the capacitor voltage will be smooth and continuous, which represents uh, full soft charging. So we can then use these uh, discontinuities to detect um, hard charging events. In practice, the differential fine capacitor voltage is fed into um, this slope detect circuitry. It has a subtractor stage for signal conditioning, a differentiator, differentiator stage, and then a dual comparator stage, which can detect um, hard charging loss events. Then the controller can adjust the converter gate signals accordingly. And the control here was implemented as a daughter board, which was designed to interface with an existing 48 to 6 volt Dixon converter. So on, in this slide, we have um, an example showing how the control is able to converge onto timings that result in soft charging, even when initialized with uh, hard charging states. So at first, you can see in orange that the capacitor voltage experiences a sharp step down, um, which indicates that the subphase A timing is too short. After the control is enabled, the timing of the subphase A is gradually increased until the capacitor voltages are smooth, demonstrating soft charging. The control is also able to converge on soft charging timings under uh, transient and load step conditions. So for both uh, load step up and step down transients here, the system was able to converge to complete soft charging in less than 15 switching cycles. So uh, to summarize, we can say that owing to their ability to achieve high efficiency and power density, hybrid and resonant switch capacitor converters have shown promising performance in 48 volts data center intermediate bus applications. 
However, to allow the use of cost-effective and high-density passive components, which often have higher tolerance and non-ideal non characteristics, we do need uh, different active control techniques. And here we have presented several of such techniques that can maintain soft switching and soft charging capabilities across wide uh, ranges of operating conditions. The increase in robustness, footprint, and cost effectiveness resulting from these proposed techniques can hopefully support easier adoption of resonant switch capacitor converters um, in various industry applications such as data centers. So finally, I would like to thank my colleagues at the Berkeley Power and Energy Center, uh, many of whom have contributed and co-authored the works presented here. Um, and I would also invite you all to stop by your poster if you, have, um, if you want to have more in-depth discussions. But um, thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Looks like we have time for a couple questions for Haifa. So um, given this is an intermediate bus application, we haven't really been um, designing for fast transient response. We were most focusing on like precision. Um, so the control techniques that, are re that we are using are all hysteretic controllers, which are usually slower than you know, a regular analog controller. Um, but uh, there are ways that we can increase the speed of the transients of these control techniques. So right now in lab experimentally, I and Rose as well, has we have both been focusing more on um, precision. So we use small step size every cycles to like adjust our timings. But what we could do is we could increase those step sizes, but in the converged state will be maybe a little bit less precise. So there's a trade off there. Um, but yeah, but usually because the transient performance is more important in the second stage, we were more focused on uh, precision. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Haifa and Rosa. Great work.